Steve Cook Hirabayashi, and you're listening to the movie Raid. It's time for the movie Raid, and tonight's victim is martial artist, actor, stuntman Keith Cook, that played in Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Heat Seeker, and many others. Hello, Keith. Hello, Mike. How are you? I am Peachy. What have you been up to? Well, I, I run a martial arts school with my wife in uh, Los Angeles. So we're busy all the time. We're always going at it every day. And what does she do? Does she also do the, the same type or does she do something a little bit different? Yeah, she does the same type because uh, actually I, I taught her martial arts. She's been doing it for about seven or eight years now. Is she also involved with, with film too or she, she just purely teaches as well? She just teaches and participates here in the studio, goes to the occasional tournament. Now, so you've been in several films as a mixed actor and a martial artist. How do you actually tell a story using the two together? Well, um, you know, I think I think that being able to communicate some of the uh, you know the principles, like the, the real principles in martial arts, is what's important to me. Like when I if I do a kick or a punch on on film, I want it to look real. So you have to you know learn about the correct camera angles and and all that stuff, and having good rhythm, and you know I, I want it to look dangerous. You know, fast, powerful, dynamic. All those things. So I think you know, there's there's people who are great fighters that can't always transfer it onto film, and there are people who are can transfer fighting onto film very well that probably aren't that great of fighters in real life. And so definitely, it's a, it's an art, you know, to be able to sell something on film. And usually, it's a you know, it's a combination of, of teamwork, you know, by the, the director, the camera people, the stunt people. You know, the people giving reactions, and then the choreography is very important. You could have really great choreography, though, and you could have a terrible cameraman or something like that who couldn't somehow film it in the correct way so it doesn't come out well, or you could have somebody who couldn't deliver the action well because they don't have enough training or something like that. So I think there's a lot of factors that come together to make a good fight on film. Do you think it's a little bit overlooked uh, when it comes to our martial arts to film? Because... I mean, you see actors, and you want the best out of these actors. Like in terms in the scene, you want you know give the best reaction. You want to be into the reactions. Just like when it comes to fighting, you don't just want just fancy footwork. I mean, you want to see some real actual you know real footwork. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and and so that take a lot of dedication to really develop some of those fine nuances that make a big difference on film. Because you know, like I say, the camera doesn't lie; it's going to pick up everything. You know, if you have a good uh, cinematographer, he might be able to cover some of somebody's sins, you know. And I've worked with a lot of actors and actresses over the years, too, that are getting ready for films. I can tell right away if somebody can make something real or not. You know, like a really good actor usually can do it unless they're not, you know, very physically uh, oriented. You know, like if, if they just haven't been a very physical person in their lives. Um, but I think a lot of times it's, it's more the commitment and being able to get down and dirty. When it comes to the acting portion, even though you're skilled with the martial arts on, on that side, but what if you're expected to just act with a little bit of a martial arts? I mean, how does that kind of throw you off a little bit? Uh, are you talking about me specifically? I, I think that what happens is, for, you know, in my experience, like I trained uh, Zoe Saldana for uh, Avatar. And she is a very physically capable person. I mean, extremely athletic and uh, very flexible and strong. She could do any kick. Like, you show her a spinning hook kick, and she could do it automatically. Uh, better than a lot of martial arts people. Because she's just very, she was a like a ballerina dancer, and she's just very, and, and you know, sometimes you work with a dancer and everything looks fancy. She can make it look edgy. And so... I imagine that if I was a stunt coordinator and she was in the scene, I'd be able to use her a lot. Whereas a lot of times the stunt coordinator is going to double someone if they're not that capable and it's a very physically demanding role and they're not a very physical person. They're probably going to double them more. But a lot of times too, you know, you don't want you don't want your actress or actor getting hurt, so they will go to a double. Is that why you specifically want to do the martial arts slash acting perspective rather than less of the stunt? Well, I, I think you know, <laughs> you know, I have a lot better chance of getting cast in a martial arts movie than I do in a movie that has no martial arts in it. 
you know, because I would have an advantage over an actor who doesn't uh, have martial arts experience if it was a very physically demanding role. And so uh, I've thought about that quite a bit. I mean, if you look back and you look at Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal, guys like that, that really are martial artists became actors. Except Bruce Lee did some acting when he was a little kid, too. So, um, and he came from a family of actors. So that's, that's a little bit different. But he was, I think, an exceptional example of a, you know, he was a tremendously innovative martial artist and just a very bright guy who was uh, uh, very creative and uh, was very well studied, very well schooled in the martial arts, just with his own research and practice. And so that, I think, set him apart from a lot of people. And obviously, Chuck Norris was a martial arts athlete that was very successful. You know, turned that into an acting career. That's similar to Steven Seagal. You know, even though he, I don't think you could say he was an athlete, he was a martial artist first and then became an actor. And that's the way I see myself. I'm really a martial artist who became an actor. And these other people are, are actors, who get cast in a role as martial arts in it, and then they try to learn the martial arts. And some people do it a lot better than other people. And the results is actually pretty surprising. Like, I don't know if you've seen the movie called The Last Dragon. They had an actor who had no experience in... Are you talking, uh, are you talking about Time Up? Yeah, and I can't remember the, the dude as um, plays Shonoff. I'm so sorry, I, I can't remember his name. Um, unfortunately, he died. That plays Shonoff, but he was an actor in acting. And then Tom Mack, who was in martial arts, but didn't really have any experience in acting. You know, I was just at a, uh, actually, we were a couple years ago, was that a couple years ago? We were in New York for something called the uh, Urban Action Urban Action Showcase, and Time Mack was there. And I, I actually knew Time Mack pretty good from the tournament circuit. He used to come out do karate tournaments a lot when I was still competing. And so I got to know him a little bit, but I, I got to uh, hang out with him a couple of years ago. He's really he's a really nice guy. But uh, I didn't know that about Shona, but I love that movie. Uh, yeah, that's a good example right there, because I didn't know that about the guy who played Shona. That is an example of somebody with a lot of attitude who really came off as he was a real martial arts guy, you know, because he just had the attitude for his character, you know. So you don't question it. So let a, a person, you know, do the action a little too much, and it reveals a lot about them, you know, that, that they don't look like they could actually do it. And so you have to be really careful, you know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like, like you mentioned, commitment. Uh, there are actors that are willing to put real work and effort doing this and, and I'm, I'm even going to use an uh, example John Wick uh, Keanu Reeves put some serious hardcore training into this uh, doing the gung fu and as well as different other moves and stuff and it really does show in my opinion that, that he actually did it and you know I, I agree with you absolutely and you know oddly enough that, uh, the director of that movie Chad Stasky who was uh, Keanu Reeves double for years stunt double um I worked with him on his first film. Actually, Heat Seeker was his first film, and he played one of the fighters in there. And, but, and he was from the Inesano Academy, you know, Danny Inesano. He's a great guy, and uh, I, I love what he did with uh, John Wick. I mean, it's a super, super violent film, you know, but there's a lot of artistry in it, you know. Keanu Reeves pulls off that role so well, so convincingly, you know, it's, it's a understated, you know, and... I just love it. I think it's a great film. It, some people would I disagree because they think what they're watching is just a bunch of flips and turns and stuff like that. But my opinion is it's how it's done, and I thought it was done very well. In my opinion, and I, that's what made me want to keep watching it because that's why I was looking forward to John Wick too. And it just to me, it was even better. Personally, I like gritty. You know, I like gritty fights. John Wick has a lot of that in it. When people start doing, you know, like five forties and spinning this and that. I sort of get turned off. You know, I'm not a big fan of it. I like to see good street fighting, you know, commando fighting. I like that stuff. But John Wick has a lot of that stuff in it. You know, there's there's a lot of countless Hollywood martial arts type films, but do you think martial arts films within that area displayed is still respected in their own tradition? I think so. I mean, I think there's films that are kind of timeless, like Enter the Dragon, like Bruce Lee's films, you know. I love this his spirit, you know, on film, and I think, you know, it was very motivating to me as a kid to see Bruce Lee fighting in a movie, and 
you know, when I when I started taking martial arts, as far as I knew, I was Bruce Lee, you know, and so I would try to ride on that kind of energy, and it, it was very motivating. I love some of the, the throwbacks, but, I, you know, I'm a big fan also of uh, Donnie Yen and Jackie Chan. You know, I mean, I love Jackie Chan. I'm not a big fan of comedy martial arts movies. I mean, you know, like you brought up one, you know, The Last Dragon. You know, I, I'm just not, not as big a fan of them, but... I like it. I like uh, I like Jackie Chan a lot, but you know he's playing a straight man now and doing a great job. I love the new uh, Karate Kid with Will Smith's son. I like him in that straight role. Yeah, I personally like his uh, older films. I mean, because I'm old school, I love to watch hardcore. You know, just beat him up. But you know, with actual flair, to me, you know, Jackie Chan has really nice flair to it. I've watched his uh, stunt documentary. We had all the stunt people doing all this really crazy stuff that you didn't think like anyone could do including himself i'm like wow you know it, it's like it's, it's truly amazing when you, when they put this kind of effort and actual heart into it um they make a great performance on on not just showing you how to do it off screen but must post it up on screen it's it's all about showing how the audience how you present the martial arts style i mean it, do you think influence can actually hurt a little bit even though they may be influenced by like you said like jackie chan or bruce lee but it also can reflect on the on the screen too of how you fight um, whether it's MMA or any other type of style do you think that can kind of be a disadvantage to them on the on the screen themselves like for example if because they end up in, imitating someone you mean yes yes well I think that that would always be a, a disadvantage you know if you're not making it fresh and, and being able to put a lot of yourself into whatever you do you know I mean, it's great that you're influenced by these guys, but I mean, when when you're starting to perform these types of moves and stuff, you're you're like, well, that kind of looks more like Bruce Lee, or that kind of looks like more like so and so. I'm like, you know, you got to put your your own type of style to it. I mean, show the people what you what you can do, and you know, like I said, influence is great, but it's kind of it. You kind of kind of keep that to yourself in a way. Yeah. But do you think uh, when it comes to the martial arts type uh, that that are in the in film, do you think they mean a little bit over glorified on on some aspects. Do I think it's that the fighting is glorified? Do you think it's it's come to the point where a lot of it's becoming too over glorified, where it's just like a little bit too over the top? Uh, sometimes it is. <laughs> I think it's a thing of taste, you know. Like you know, it's it's not because you, you if you look at a movie like uh, the one we were just talking about, John Wick. Probably a lot of people think it's over the top and the the amount of violence and the amount of shooting and. I remember a movie called Kentucky Fried Movie. Do you remember that? <laughs> I totally do. <laughs> yeah. And you know how the like the guy who was playing Bruce Lee and he'd be fighting and the bodies would just be piling up. <laughs> yeah. I actually got reminded of that movie when I was watching John Wick too, because I was like, Holy moly, you know. Like how many people can this one guy go through? But that's not really what it was about, you know, I mean so so if you can let go of that a little bit and just enjoy the movie, it, it's sort of like it's sort of like a violent ballet or something like that. You know, I think it's just how you look at it. And some, some like that that movie, they managed to pull it off. But there's some movies where you're looking at this stuff and you're just going, "Oh boy!" You know, like I, I saw the movie The Great Wall. Did you see that? Uh, not yet. No. Well, I happened to see it because it's on you know it's on cable right now and. I watched it and I just, I just, I didn't dig it. You know, I think it just didn't, it didn't work. There's a lot of uh, CGI, you know, uh, monsters in it, and even with Matt Damon in it and some good actors, they couldn't. For some reason, they didn't pull it off. Yeah, that's that's what I mean when when I'm talking about like over glorified when when you put the CGI and then you're just making it look even more fancier than what it is, and you're like, well, then you're not really getting the impact of the moves. Of, of the martial arts of what these guys are performing because you know they're doing all these spin kicks and they're kicking all over the place and you're like that's so unrealistic you know why would they fly that far away in the begin with but <laughs> but it's cinema you know and so so the thing is you know like I think there's a lot of things that go into making a good movie a good story good acting good directing good lighting good you know all these things and and it all comes down to having good taste you know you can't save a movie with CGI. You can't save a bad movie with fancy kicks or something like that, you know? So, Deadpool actually is Heat Seeker, you know? I mean, that was shot in a way that I just think it was, there was very little chance of that being a successful movie, you know? Number one, it was shot in 
11 days, okay, there would never be any coverage on a fight. The fights were all done in masters with cameras, like, hidden all around uh, the players, you know. So there, so at any given time, there would be, like, six cameras running, and you don't even know which camera you're playing to because they wanted to do everything in masters really fast. And so it was really, really difficult, you know. Like, I had 14 fight teams in 11 days, and you didn't have time to rehearse for any of them. So, you know, it's just no way to make a movie, you know. So it, it just didn't come out very good. Yeah, I mean, it also... Not terrible, you know. Yeah, and it hurts you a little bit because, like, you put all this effort in it just so you can get a couple minutes of screen time of what you can do, and that's it. And then the movie bombs, and then then you, you got because you're that's credit for you for life because that's your name was attached to that, regardless of you know how it was done. <laughs> that's why that's why you got to be careful. That's why actors are careful about um, you know what projects they pick and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, and when what message do you? teach when others are uh, when students are interested in performing uh, martial arts on screen uh, what road do you expect them to actually go on if they choose to go to the screen? I like to keep it real you know try to keep it real. I've met people who are just you know they're, they're just going for a look or something like that and they haven't really developed any heart and soul in their martial art and I love heart and soul I love people who are willing to take a punch and keep going. And guys like Jackie Chan are like that, you know. I mean, he's taken some heavy shots. He's a tough dude to get through a long career like that and take the pumps that he's taken and be as creative as he is. You know, he's, he's got to be a brilliant guy, too. But, you know, when I think of Jackie Chan, you know, you think of, like, somebody who could be a comedic actor, somebody who could be, a, you know, the straight man, the tough guy. And also, he really is tough, and I, I love that. Yeah. Do you also think that some people or some martial artists would actually choose subgenres of the martial arts, like the imagery, just so they could show it off on screen? Definitely. To me, my opinion is, I, I think it could just totally ruin you because you're a martial artist, but yet you choose a specific style or mixed style just so you could show it off on screen. And if you're wanting to teach someone this. You're reflecting the same thing, what you're doing to that person. They learn from what you just did to be what you just did, and that's not really entirely good because they could ruin their career as well. Yeah. Do you want to promote anything that you want to plug in? Any websites? Uh, any any new projects that you might be doing? Uh, any release dates and so forth and so forth. The only thing that I'm involved in currently, is Alita: Battle Angel, which is a new movie that's going to be out in 2018 sometime. I think probably in the summer, and I've been training Rosa Salazar, who's the lead actress for it, and it's another James Cameron uh, project. I mean, he's the pro he's a producer, and Robert Rodriguez is directing, and she's just a tremendous talent, and she's not very well known yet, but she will be. This is going to be, it should be a huge movie. <laughs> um, she worked really hard on her martial arts. She's been training for over a year now, and she's just a, I, she's a really fast study, and she's a tough girl. And I really enjoy training her, so I just like to plug that Alita Battle Angel. All right, what about your studios? Uh, are you still teaching, or uh, or do you are you in other studios, or just? No, I yeah, I've had this studio for 24 years now, and I'm a I'm a dedicated martial arts instructor, you know, and I teach a lot of kids, and uh, we still go to competitions. You know, I don't specifically train people for movies unless that's what they want to do. But, I, you know, my, my goal is to help people become great martial artists here. And we do, you know, we do uh, fitness, we do kickboxing, boxing. I love boxing. I've been a big uh, student of, of boxing for, for years. And so I teach boxing, and I also, you know, we have fitness classes and martial arts classes. That is martial artist, actor, stuntman, Keith Cook.